Hello, Rowlett High School Freshman Eagles. My name is Ms. Blakey, and I'm the principal here at Rowlett. Thank you so much for joining us for a few minutes today to learn more about your new school. You're gonna love it here for the next four years with me, your assistant principals, and your counselors, and your amazing teachers. Take a look. So you'll survive high school. Just always pay attention, look forward, and do the best for yourself. You just have to do you and kind of just worry about yourself and make sure you're healthy and all that goodness. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, what is high school going to be like? And what are some of the things that I should expect when I'm going into high school? And really, when you go into high school, I'm not going to lie, at first it is a little nerve wracking, but it's also very exciting at the same time. It is gonna be filled with a bunch of enjoyable moments for you to make and a lot of other things. So when you go in, don't be nervous. It's gonna always be like that at first, but after a while, you get totally used to it and in all, it's a really good experience. It's high school like middle school. It is so different. It literally is crazy how different it is. So the question is, is high school fun? And I would have to say, absolutely, high school is fun if you choose to make it. If you choose to participate in things such as pep rallies, football games, dress up weeks, stuff like that, it's definitely going to be fun and worthwhile. Well, one thing I wish I would have done differently was gotten more involved in like activities and clubs like that. I don't let the mindset of I'll do it later get to my head. Once you let that mindset get to your head, you start to procrastinate on a lot of your work. Will I be able to fit in? Yes, as cliche as it sounds, um, be yourself. Uh, you know, don't change for anybody. I mean, once you find those few people that you're really, like, that click and, like, you're really close friends with, the high school experience just gets even better. You're going to fit in. There's many different people in high school. Try to put yourself out there. Maybe join some clubs or some sports that interest you. Is it hard to make friends? Basically, be yourself. If you be yourself, people will naturally come to you. So just be yourself and you'll overall, you'll get friends. Making friends will not be that hard. If you find something that you're passionate about, there will always be other people who are just as passionate as you are. Is high school scary? Not at all. I mean, it's a new environment, but it's not really scary. You're going to get used to it. Do the upperclassmen pick on younger students? Well, as a, when I was a younger student, I never was picked on by an upperclassman. Neither as an upperclassman have I picked on a younger student. So my answer to, the, to that would be no. If you are getting picked on, just talk to someone you trust and hopefully you can get it figured out. How can I enjoy high school to the fullest? Participate in the dress up day such as Hawaiian Day, one of my favorites. Also, don't forget to join the clubs and organizations such as Student Council and the bowling team. Don't miss out on football games or the pep rallies. Go Eagles! And don't forget to attend homecoming. Last but not least, making new friends. A way that you can enjoy high school to the fullest, I would say is go to the sports games. They're really fun, like a lot of school spirit. How you enjoy high school to the fullest is you get involved in as many things as you possibly can. You don't have to be in just one thing. Be involved in as much as you can for as much time as you can. 
The thing that I love most about Rolla High School is how friendly and caring everybody is and the inclusive nature of the school and its motto, we are one. It really shows in our day-to-day -day interactions, you know, how much we love each other and how much we're all just a family. One thing I love about RHS are the teachers and how willing they are to help you succeed. One of the things that I love the most is the sense of community that we have. One of the things that really reflect on the community is for the ho homecoming prep rally that really really shows their pe the people's love and appreciation for our school. What I most love about Rowlett High School is that the principal truly loves the students and she's so encouraging and makes sure everyone is having fun. What I love most about Rowlett High School is all the clubs and organizations they have to offer. The thing that I love most about Rowlett High School is that it's probably really culturally diverse. Uh, you can look around school, you can see a bunch of different people of different ethnicities and cultures, skin tones, and you can learn about their cultures and their way of life. It's just really cool. What do I love most about Rowlett High School? So I really love the people, um, the activities, and most importantly, the school spirit, because we have really good um, school spirit. Also, just the friends that you make. Like, I was kind of nervous about making friends, but um, I joined some like clubs and I took theater and all this and that helped me make um, a lot of friends so definitely like joining clubs and like getting involved it really helps you. What I love the most about RHS is how amazingly we come together. We come together to show our energy and team spirit at pep rallies and we always come together to show our support for everyone around the school. Hello class of 2024. My name is Miss Blakey and I'm the principal at Rowlett High School. We can't wait to meet you. We have our whole administrative team here to introduce ourselves until we can see you face to face, hopefully in just a few weeks. So welcome to Rowlett High School. You're going to be a proud eagle and we can't wait to have you on campus. Now Miss Williams, will you please introduce yourself, one of our assistant principals. My name is Miss Williams, and I just cannot wait to meet each of you guys. Um, welcome to the nest. Um, at this time, we're going to uh, introduce uh, Miss Jenna Montgomery. Hey guys, I'm Miss Montgomery. I'm actually the uh, assistant principal over the class of 2024. So any fun things that you guys are planning, I'll be able to help you plan uh, along with your sponsors. I can't wait to meet you guys. And now I'm going to hand it over to Miss Thomas. Hello, ninth graders. Uh, welcome to the nest. My name is Kimberly Thomas and I'm assistant principal. I've been here for four years and I look forward to meeting you guys in person soon. And now I want to uh, hand it over to Mr. Stats. Hello, class of 2024. My name is Mr. Stats. Uh, I am the assistant principal and I oversee uh, the junior class of 2022. I am stoked that y'all are going to be here at Rowland High School, and I'm looking forward to working with some of you that are in our P-TECH and ECHS programs. Uh, it's going to be a great year, and uh, we're excited to get you guys on campus. And now I'm going to introduce Mr. Hulsebus. All right. Welcome, Class 2024, to Rowland High School. My name is Derek Hulsebus, and I'm the assistant principal that will be working with the senior class of 2021. I can't wait to meet you guys when we get here on campus and get started on your high school journey. So this is our administrative team and uh, we're excited to welcome you. I think we each prepared a, uh, a fun fact and then some of you may have a couple of fun facts. I just have one. So my fun fact for you guys, for you freshmen are, did you know that no number before the number 1000 contains the letter A? How interesting is that? Hmm. Very oh. interesting. What else do y'all have? Okay. Well, I have one. I have, well, I have a fun fact, and then I have a motivational quote for them. Um, so my fun fact is a butt load is a real measurement of weight. Did you know that? Hmm. And know that. my little inspiration for you guys is the sky is full of stars, and there's room for all of them to shine, like I know you will. Well... I have another fun fact. Um, May 29th is actually uh, put your pillow in the fridge day. So I guess that evening you can go home and sleep on a nice cold pillow. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fun fact. Did you, did you know that there's only one U.S. state capital? 
without a McDonald's and it's in Montpelier, Vermont. Hmm. Did y'all know that? I didn't know that. I thought everybody had a McDonald's. On every corner. Very interesting, Ms. Right. Thomas. And I'm going to have to go with, uh, you know, class of 2024. On average, 12 newborns every day will be given to the wrong parents. So just remember that next time you're having a conversation. On the dad. <laughs> wow. They may not really be your parents. Never know. That's deep. Mm -hmm. That's deep. That's scary. <laughs> that too. And finally, did you know that a squirrel's teeth never stop growing? Hmm. hmm. Scary. I didn't know like that. The cartoon. In the cartoon, the squirrels always have really long teeth. Makes sense hmm. now. Interesting. Well, that's what we've got for you, um, freshmen, Eagles. We're um, Hopefully, we'll see you in a few weeks, and you have a lot of work to do um, to learn about Rowlett High School. You're going to learn a lot of traditions. Even in this orientation, you're going to learn some of our traditions, and when you get to campus, uh, you're going to join right in. You're going to love this year, and uh, thanks for joining us, and we will meet you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi. My name is Tina Brown. I'm the lead counselor here at Rowlett High School. We wanted to introduce you to the counselors today and let you know um, we're here for you if there's anything that you're needing. Um, something you might come to the counseling office for would be um, if you're sitting in a class that maybe you have credit for it. That doesn't happen too often, but occasionally. Or maybe you um, are having difficulty in a class and you need to talk to somebody about it to see if there's other options or we can get you some help. Um, that would be another reason, or maybe something's just going on personally for you and you want to talk to somebody. We welcome that. We want you to come and, and meet with your counselor for whatever reason. We're here for you. Um, we want to show you what it's like inside our office and let you meet your counselor. Um, my name again is Tina Brown and I'm the counselor for students whose last names begin with the letter A through BR. So if you fall in that area, I'm your counselor. Now we'll go in and meet some other people who are in our office that you might need to know. <clears throat> Over here on the left is Ms. Restrepo. She is our, our uh, counseling secretary. Um, she and Ms. Gregory is another one, but she is not here today. Uh, they will greet you when you come in and you let them know that you need to speak with your counselor. They will direct you over to this laptop over here on the uh, little table, the cart, and you need to have your ID on you when you come um, because you will scan your ID and the directions for how to enter your information is right here on the laptop. So you just come in, read this, scan your ID, and then uh, they will direct you to go back and see your counselor. Let's go and meet um, your counselors and a couple of other people who office in our office area. Hi y'all, welcome to Rowlett High School. I am Tracy Marcassoni, I'm the activities director and you will see me quite a bit. My office is next door in the assistant principal's office. You'll come see me for things like clubs and organizations. If you lost your ID or you can't find it or something, I'll have IDs. I'll do letter jackets. Um, I do a, kind of a little bit of everything. So you'll see me running around all over the school. Hi y'all, I'm Mitzi Gensler. Welcome to Rowlett. I am counselor over students whose last names begin with J-O-O -O through N-G. I'm also the avid counselor and the, um, I'm over Naviance. So if you have any kind of questions ever, please feel free to come see us. Welcome. Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie Archer and I am one of the school counselors here at Rowlett. I'm specifically over the alphabet of SH through Z. This year, I will be over AP testing and social emotional lesson plans for ninth and 10th grade students. Welcome to Raleigh.
Hello, I am Mrs. Macadon. Welcome class of 2024. We're so excited you're coming to Rowlett High School. I am the P-TECH and Early College High School Magnet Advisor. So if you have any questions, you want to know anything about our programs, come talk to me. And also, we are the only high school with the JROTC Junior Air Force Program. So talk to me and I will tell you more about our wonderful programs. Hello, my name is Courtney Cox and I am the counselor over our P-TECH program, which we actually still have seats available. So if you're interested in getting your Associate of Science, or an Applied Associates in Software and Gaming, come talk to me, because we still have seats and we would love for you to earn that college diploma, college degree at the same time as your high school diploma. I'm also over our dual credit program, so all things college related to get those college hours as a high school student, I'm here to help you out. Welcome to Rowlett. Again, you get to see me again. Uh, I'm Tina Brown, lead counselor at Rowlett High School. I uh, also have students whose last name begin with the letters A through BR. Um, you have anything you want to come see me about, please come see me. I'm happy to answer any questions. Good morning and welcome to Rowlett High School. I'm Carol Wood and I work with students whose last name begin with B U through F O. I also have the privilege to work with the Gifted and Talented program, and I work with the social and emotional learning uh, lessons for juniors and seniors. We hope you have a great freshman year. Go. I'm Officer Freeman, this is Officer Garcia. We're your SROs at Rowlett High School. Officer Garcia's office is located in the Assistant Principal's office, and my office is located in the uh, 1100 hallway, and it's actually room 1127. Um, I would definitely say that junior year is probably the hardest year because you have to be really focused and you have to like get good scores in your AC, uh, SAT and everything to get into good colleges and you need great stuff on your college applications. What can I do to get ahead in school? And the biggest thing is to study for all your classes, no matter what. If you study for your test and anything that you need to study for, it lets you have the foundation that you need to go ahead and excel to all the other things that you want to do. If you don't have that, you can't get ahead. If you want to get, let's say, a scholarship for a sport or something, your grades have to be good. It lets you get ahead in what you need to do. I'm going to be telling you about AP classes and how you can benefit from taking them. An advanced placement class is a college level class offered to high schoolers around the world. By college level class, I mean not only is the coursework going to be more tedious, but you can actually earn college credit from taking the class. The average college class costs around $600 to take, but by taking an AP class, you can actually get the credit completely free. 
The only thing you have to do to earn college credit is get a three or higher on your AP exam. So if you were to take like an AP history class, then if you were to pass the test, you would get college credit hours towards history. Now, I would definitely recommend taking AP courses if you can and are able. Even though the workload is a little bit more, it's definitely worth it in the long run. It saves you time and money that you would have to spend in college. Is the workload a lot more in advanced classes? Yes and no. So sometimes I think it depends on the teacher or the subject. Like in math classes, I find that I had the tendency to get more homework. For English classes, I get a lot of like projects and normally leaning towards the creative side. Um, for AP classes versus honors and regulars, I would say that you do get a lot more homework. But as long as you stay organized it and don't procrastinate too much, then you'll get it done and it's not too stressful, hopefully. <laughs> yes, your teacher will help you if you need academic attention. Uh, most teachers, when they say that you are struggling with something, they will reach out to you and they will ask you if you have any questions off for tutoring. If you feel like your teacher does not recognize that, you can always go up to your teacher and tell them, I need help with this, when are tutorials, you can always email your teachers. Your teachers are always there for you and they just wanna make sure that you are successful in your subject so feel free to always email your teachers and talk to them in person and if you have any questions don't be afraid to ask them in class even if you feel like the rest of the students aren't going to really like the explanation that's going to come from your question the teachers at rhs are nice caring and sweet and everything they do for us is to help us benefit in our future so remember treat the teachers the way you want to be treated how are the teachers the teachers are great i love all my teachers i loved all my teachers freshman year and i'm waiting for sophomore year <laughs> but um you know as long as you respect them they'll respect you back and um you know make sure you do your best in class because the teachers do do a lot for you welcome class of 2024 these are some tips and tricks on how to succeed in high school as given to you by current Rowlett High School students. No matter how you are learning, whether it's face-to-face, -face, whether it's virtual classroom, this is some great advice. I hope you listen to it. I hope you take it to heart. First, be present. Be on time. Pay attention and participate. Stay in class. Avoid wandering the halls or wandering away from your screen. Get help in tutorials when you need it. Teachers are here to help, and that's what they really want to do. They are here for you. Be involved. Have school spirit. Participate in dress-up days and other school-wide events. Don't be afraid to try new activities and clubs. And once we're allowed to, go to games. Go to the pep rallies. Go to concerts and shows. They are a blast. You'll have a great time if you just put yourself out there. Have a good time. Be kind. Be respectful of everyone and other students, teachers, faculty, and most importantly, yourself. Be considerate and pick up after yourself. Being nice to people pays off. Be smart. Be wise about the friends you choose to hang around with. Avoid the drama created by others. Stay out of trouble. Watch what you put out on social media. Once it's online, it's there forever. Be organized. Keep a calendar of due dates for assignments and tests. Keep a binder with all your classwork and notes neatly organized. That way you can find it whenever you need it. Check Canvas, your school email, Google Classroom, all of the tools your teachers are going to give you. Check those things daily. Do work when it's assigned. Things can pile up quickly and then you're going to feel overwhelmed. Just think, you would not feel overwhelmed if you did it all on a daily basis. Be successful. Think about and plan for your future and what you need to do to get there. Keep track of your GPA from day one. AP classes are very helpful if you're planning to go to college. But just remember, AP classes require work. Work with your counselors. The RHS, RHS counselors are your advocates and are here to help you. Don't hesitate to go to them for help for any issues that you have. Just send them an email. Their email addresses are on the RHS website.
Here's how you might request a schedule change. Use this link. Scan this QR code. If you're watching this online, pause it, write it down. Your counselor will review the request and get back to you with a response, probably through email. Notes from the counselors, guys, about schedule changes. First, no schedule changes the first two days of school. we got to make sure everything's working right before we even start thinking about changing things. No elective changes. Academic classes only. That means math, science, English, social studies, world languages. No teacher changes. Pre-AP honors and AP classes cannot be dropped without principal approval. And finally, let's look at some things you might have heard about RHS, whether they be true or false. True or false, Rowlett High School has a pool on the roof. Ha! <laughs> false. But GISD is preparing to open the beautiful new natatorium that will be shared by all GISD schools. True or false, there is a third floor. False. Only two floors. Second floor upstairs is mostly English, world languages, and social studies. First floor downstairs is mostly math, science, fine arts, and athletics. Tech classes can be found on either floor. You can purchase an elevator pass to use the elevator at school. Wouldn't that be nice? But it's false. The elevator is only available if you have a medical need approved by the nurse, and then you will need an elevator key. However, there's plenty of stairwells available through the building. The main stairwell in the cafeteria can get pretty crowded, so find some other stairwells to use that are closer to your classrooms. A lot of those other stairwells are near the restroom, so word to the wise. There is a Chick-fil-A lunch line in the RHS cafeteria. That is false. We wish, but there are plenty of options to choose from in the cafeteria serving lines. You'll find something you like. It's going to be a great year, true or false? True. Every day is a great day to be an eagle. Welcome to the RHS family. Dear students, there's a right way to join an online classroom, and then there's the wrong way. Take a look. First, you want to sit facing a window or a light. Next, you want to press mute. Then, look directly into the camera. And finally, lean into the screen so that your entire face fills the frame. <laughs> it seems easy, and it is. Just avoid being one of these students. Harry Houdini. The one who hides and tries to disappear behind his hood. Ah, uh, the Steph Curry. The student who wants to interact, but he's so far away from the screen you can barely see him. He's 10 feet behind the three-point line, and he has trouble making his point. Or you've got the dark shadow. The student who you can barely see, and it's really creepy. And the I woke up like this, the student who put no effort in their appearance and they're clearly sleeping through your lesson. The scene of the crime where only certain body parts of the victim, I, I mean the student, can be seen. And then the silence of the lamb, the student who rambles on and on and on, but is clearly on mute, but has no idea. And then, oh, the Zoomer, the student who takes the word Zoom a little bit too literally. And then we have the Halo, the student who sits with the light right behind them, casting a hue of bright light around them. It's very annoying. And then we have the Nomad, the student who cannot sit still and roams around the house throughout the entire lesson. And then you've got the groundhog, the one whose head you can barely see. And then we have the headless horseman, whose camera angle is quite unfortunate, for obvious reasons. And then we have Galileo, the student who is constantly looking around and daydreaming and clearly not paying attention to anything you're saying. The unmutable madness, 
There is so much going on in this child's house and for some reason, he doesn't seem to be able to keep himself on mute. Can't you clean your room? And then you have the Decepticon. The student who acts like he's paying attention, but he's really not. He's deceiving you. He's doing everything but paying attention. And oh, the self-obsessed student, only interested in using classroom screen time to primp and to adorn themselves. And finally, we have the rest Zoomer. This is the student who's on Zoom and forgets to press mute when he goes to the restroom. Boom. Stop it. Get some help. He needs some milk. So students, please heed my advice and avoid any of those behaviors. I will thank you. Your teachers will thank you. And your classmates online will appreciate it as well. Did you clean your room? Kids, I gotta go. Is it difficult to navigate throughout the school? Yes, in the beginning it is because of course we're not, not going to know where to go or where certain things are found. But luckily we do have great staff members and students that will be willing to help you out and make navigating throughout the school a lot easier. So don't be afraid to ask them. There are maps all around the school throughout the building that will tell you where exactly you are. And depending on where you have to go, you can just check out the maps, see if you're gonna go upstairs or downstairs. And then from there, you go on and about. Um, if you also have any questions, you can ask any teacher or another student where the class is that you might be going to. Um, that could help you a lot because even I as a senior don't know where everything is and I still ask for questions every once in a while. So the typical amount of time between classes is about five minutes. I know that doesn't seem like a lot of time, but once you figure out how to get from one class to the next, it'll be like nothing, I promise. Well, personally, what I immediately did was grab my schedule and I grabbed the map of the building and mapped out my whole schedule to see what would be the easiest and quickest ways to get to my classes. On the end of every hall, there is gonna be a map and on that map, it has a circle and it says, you were here and it's gonna have the room numbers of the hall that you are on and the next hall that you are maybe looking for. So that way you won't have a hard time finding the next class room that you have to go to because it's number is gonna be there. And if that classroom number is not on that map, then on the next hall it will have it. That honestly depends on what you're taking. You could be having um, let's say algebra first period and then go on to choir or band which is on the completely other side of the school and then from there you could be taking a sport and go straight across or go all the way around it just basically depends on what you're taking hey freshmen I know some of you guys are wondering what are the most important supplies that I need to bring to my classes and that's definitely going to be having pencils and pens and make sure that you have multiples because they're pretty easy to lose. Um, I realize that I go through a lot of pens, paper, and pencils throughout the school year. So it's always best to have all the supplies that you need on hand because you'd never want to go to school without the supplies that you need because you'll never get anything done and you're going to have to be asking around for pencils and it's kind of difficult. So make sure you have your supplies on hand. Is we do not use the lockers. They sit in the hallway with no purpose at all. What usually happens, we get our backpacks and we just bring them to class. And from that class, we bring them to the next. It's really simple and a lot easier. Can I carry a backpack from class to class? Yes, you can carry your backpack from class to class. You take all those supplies that you need and put it in the backpack for that day, and you get to carry it around campus. Is the food any good? Personally, I think the food is pretty good. Um, my favorite um, out of the whole lunch line is the burrito and bowl line. It kind of reminds me of Chiloso or Chipotle. We have the salad bar, the burger line. I don't even know, but that's from what my friends have told me, so yeah. 
And the answer is yes, you can, as long as they have the same lunch time as you. And you can just sit wherever you want to in the cafeteria with all your friends. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget, don't stress out too much, stay focused, and have a great freshman year. If you have any other questions, don't be scared to ask.
extracurricular activities. This is stuff that you find interesting and that like you want to try. So that could be sports, theater, band, choir, art, student council, the list goes on. Um, it's just a lot of fun stuff. There's after school clubs, there's in class, there's in school classes that you can take like art one, theater one, choir, um, basketball, uh, you know, the list goes on. And it, it gives you an opportunity to like take a break from your core classes. It gives you something to look forward to. Um, and yeah, you just meet a lot of friends and you'll make a lot of memories and you know, have a lot of fun. And that's what high school is about. It's about fun. And of course learning, but you know, you gotta have some fun somewhere and extracurricular activities is a great chance to do that. So yeah, go for it. I'm going to answer the question if extracurricular activities are during school hours or after school hours. Most of the time they are after school hours. Uh, I'm president of drama club and we always do everything after school, but sometimes clubs like in JHS do meetings before school. There are other clubs that meet during school, in the library during lunch. It all depends on your club, so make sure you talk to your sponsor about when they're gonna be meeting. Exactly the purpose of extracurricular activities. The main one is for people that are gonna apply for college. It's really important because it shows how reliable you can be. You can balance your schedule with having really important events that are happening for the extra extra activities that you sign up for. And then at the same time, you're attending all your classes and you're keeping your grades up, having a high GPA. It shows how reliable you can be and how responsible you are with your grades and for the extra activities that Hi. you signed up for. My name is Jocelyn Bisong and I am a senior. Um, what I will be uh, talking about today is about the extracurricular activities that you can do um, to help get involved and be a part of the school, really. Um, so I am a varsity cheerleader. I am also a part of NHS and um, NSHS and HOSA and so um, and class council. I'm a class uh, officer. So there are countless opportunities that you can take um, to be a, a part of a fun group. Um, and what I love about that is that with each um, like spirit group that you're a part of, the people are always different. So it's cool to have like um, different kinds of friends, like not friends that are all the same. And it's cool to really like see through other people's eyes. Um, and so I feel like the main purpose for that is to really be involved and really be invested in your school. And um, you also get some cool chords when you graduate, which is awesome. But I mean, I really enjoy it for the people and uh, getting to help out and be a part of the school. Can you balance AP classes and extracurricular activities? Yes, you can definitely balance as many AP classes and many extracurricular activities and maybe in a job in your upperclassmen years. The secret is time management. Just know how to divide your time during the day and do the work that's supposed to be done. Maybe have a planner so you know which day some things are due. And the earlier you do your homework, the better. So there's no late days on your work and no need to be stressed out. Hi, my name is Avery Bright and I am in six different clubs and organizations at Rowlett High School. And with that, my advice to you is that you get a calendar and you write down every big event, meetings, practices that you have, anything really, and just kind of see where everything overlaps. And if there's overlappage, then you would want to choose the event, practice, or game that's mandatory. And then you're going to want to go to that. And then... If you wanted to split your time, you would have to talk to your coaches and advisors about that. But with that being said, I wouldn't be scared to join multiple things just because of overlapping. I would do as much as you wanted and then see how it goes for you and see get what you involved can in clubs. One way you can get involved in clubs is by going to the Rod High School website, where you can find a list of clubs and organizations along with a brief description about what the club means and what it stands for. By the way, join Student Council. The point of extracurricular activities is to find something you enjoy doing and meeting people who have the same interests as you. Hey guys, I know you guys are curious how to get into athletics or play your favorite sport in high school, and I'm here to tell you how. So the tryouts for each sport are always going to be announced 
they're either going to be announced in the announcements in the morning or they're going to be put on the TVs in the cafeteria. And you always just want to look out for those, but they will be announced. And then you always want to make sure you to have your online paperwork, which is your rank one sport online paperwork and your physical done on the day of tryouts. Even before you show up, you have to make sure you have that done because you won't be able to try out if you don't have it. So just make sure to have that done and I wish you luck. Sports do not have to interfere with your grades unless you let it. It is really up to the individual. You've got to stay on top of your work and be organized. Do not procrastinate and wait till the last minute. It is the worst feeling whenever you get done with a game and you're really tired and you just want to go to bed and then you remember, oh, I have Algebra 2, Geometry, whatever homework do the next morning and then you have to work on it and stay up late, but you're tired. That's worst feeling. So I would just recommend getting it done as basically as soon as you get it, if possible, so. Hi, my name is Emma. I'm going to be a junior this upcoming year. Your question was, do sports interfere with grades? And to answer that, no, they don't or they shouldn't. Um, my number one thing that I learned was never procrastinate. Use all your time in classes appropriately so that you can get all your work done. Um, be disciplined. Um, have a schedule that you keep to where like you'll have practice after school and but when you get home be the first thing you do your homework so that it doesn't get overwhelming. I say keep a set schedule and just uh, the coaches will be on you too because if you don't pass then you can't play. So they'll be on you. Grades come first. Um, you shouldn't ever have a problem because the workload is not as bad as people say it is. You just have to be disciplined and get all your work done because it will get over your head if you don't. Well, by now you know the drill. Each week we travel to a different North Texas high school to get fans geared up for game day. And this morning I tackled the CBS 11 pep rally at Rowlett High School. And I love the colors, maroon and white. Being an Aggie, I feel right at home here at Rowlett High School. The Eagles, they've landed here in the gym and they are loud. And Us. And I like the shades too, by the way. Did you notice the CBS 11 pep rally sunglasses looking really sharp? I like there you go. Down. Up. And down. Somehow they're not watching me. I don't know how that's possible. And one of your, one of your dance yes. members likes weather, right? Temperatures are in the 70s and 80s. It's in the 70s and the 80s. Yeah. Uh-huh. Some will be in the 60s. Some will be in the 60s. It's more like a dance party. You don't need the pep rally. Avid, what do you guys do? You've raised a lot of money, right? Yeah, so last year we were in the like one point six million dollars in scholarships. You're gonna show me some dancing. Swiss, Swiss. You, you people don't want to see that. Pap Rally here at Rowlett High School also turned into a bit of a painting lesson. I've never painted somebody's head before. This We're getting a lot of great video footage uploaded. So y'all make sure and go check that out at CBS DFW on Instagram. The Iron Eagles here. Woo! Iron Eagles. The stunt. You guys do a lot of stunt. Karen and Russ, if I never see you again, it's been nice working with you. Oh, whoa! Fun, noisy, two words to describe everything going on in the Rowlett High School gym right now. You guys are going to teach me something, which is such a, it's such a sad thing for them to have to do. You go. Whoa, you turned around. Whoa. These guys have been pumped up all morning long. And so we are so thankful to Rowlett High School for having us out this morning. Well, I tell you, if there's a noise meter, they did pretty good. <laughs> it, was, it was really, yeah. really loud. And we're going to have more highlights and a look behind the scenes. You can do that right now if you want to at our Instagram page and Facebook page as well. And Annalise next week in Fort Worth at the O.D. Wyatt Chaperones. And I tell you, I always feel bad for the cheerleaders of the step team because they have to uh, teach yeah, like, Will you teach him? That? <laughs> like he can only like step forward. That's what he can do. He can do that. Yeah. And, and this, <laughs> you had this, that. Yeah, I got this. You're pretty good with That's the band. That's about it. All right, Jeff. Thanks.